And welcome to Stegman Coliseum in Athens, where they've already got a national football championship in town, and they are welcoming in the favorites to win the Natty on the women's side, led by Aaliyah Boston, the high-flying Gamecocks, number one in net, number one in bracketology, you name it. They are considered the team to beat. Charlie Cream's new bracketology is out with South Carolina as a one seed. This is a huge game today for Georgia. You want to be a four seed or better so you can host first and second round action as they open up the day very much on that host bubble. And we welcome you courtside. I'm Beth Mowens along with Debbie Antonelli. South Carolina in the driver's seat right now, Debbie, led by their National Player of the Year candidate and front runner, Leah Boston. You know, there's a lot of ways that South Carolina can beat you. They can go inside, they can score on the outside, but when they go on the interior, it's Aaliyah Boston, the most dominant low post presence in the women's game. She can overpower you with her skill set offensively. She can overpower you with her ability to rebound. She's a walking double-double. And on the other end, she blocks shots into their transition game. She's the key. She's always the key, and her numbers are slightly up when they play better competition. She was the co-defensive player of the year in the SEC last season with her counterpart today on the perimeter, Q Morrison. Now, Q Morrison has to control the ground. She's got to facilitate. She's got to take care of the ball. She's got to defend and keep South Carolina out of transition. She's got to get the ball to the right shooters at the right time, and she has to be a scoring presence as well if Georgia's going to pull an upset here at home. Bulldogs have a win over second-ranked NC State already on the resume. Can they take down number one today? Or will it be the Gamecocks trying to keep their win streak going? They've won 10 straight. Their lone loss on the season to Missouri. Otherwise, how about five top 10 wins? And they are 9-0 on the season against ranked opponents. They face another one here this afternoon. Great way to tip off your Super Bowl Sunday. We got a women's hoops double header. And Boston will control the tap, hand it right off to Destiny Henderson. Missed on the attempt. And that one in will be expensive seats courtside here at Stegman. I love that Dawn Staley scripts the jump ball and looks to be aggressive and attack on the first possession, right? Destiny Henderson going downhill is a nightmare for everyone. She's the point guard, number three in black, and then there's Zaya Cook, number one, who is an incredible scorer for South Carolina. Gamecock still without two of their bigs off the bench. Camila Cardoso and Leticia Amihir are away with their national team duties for Brazil and Canada, respectively. They should be back next week, or later this week. Over the top, and some paint points for Georgia. That's gonna be huge today, Debbie. Well, South Carolina scored 46 of their 59 points in the paint against Kentucky in the last game. And watch Georgia, the way they'll defend. They'll try to deny De Destiny Henderson, but they'll sag in the paint and try to force Aaliyah Boston to become a passer at this position on the floor. Boston, and fouled on the shot by Jenna Stady. They actually go a little bigger, too, in the starting lineup today with Javin Nicholson out there. You know, Beth, i got to tell you, you know, before the game we were talking about, I hope the officials wouldn't call any fouls on Aaliyah Boston or Jenna Stady, just because we want to see the showcase of these two ladies' skill set. And right away, through the double team, Stady picks up her first foul. Boston, 76% from the free throw line. Averaging a double-double, one of just a handful of players in Power 5 to do that. You throw in the shot-blocking capabilities as well. There's no question she's a late-game finisher. You want the ball in her hand. She's the best free-throw shooter. I think she makes the best decisions with the ball in her hand. And this South Carolina team, as much as they are a tremendous rebounding team, first in the nation in the margin, plus 17, they're minus two in turnover margin. That's a number they have to correct. Going to be tough to win it all with the negative turnovers. And the mid-range is good on the pull-up for Morrison. Well, as a matter of fact, in the last 10 years of national champions, nobody has won the national championship with a minus turnover margin. Zaya Cook 
Boy, it'd be huge for South Carolina for her to bring her shooting percentages back up. They've dipped a little bit this year. The junior out of Toledo, Ohio, member of the All-SEC team last year. Offensive rebound for Stady. What a great start for Georgia to be able to knock down their first couple of shots, get an offensive rebound, get back into their sets. Sarah Ashley Barker looking to go to work. And another offensive rebound. Finally, Boston says enough of that, and they will push the other way. Don't have numbers. Cook will wait for the cavalry. It's a softer cover, man. It's an all-out deny on Henderson once she gives it up. And you've got to stay with South Carolina on the glass if you're going to have a chance in this one. Stady was able to hold her ground that time against Aaliyah. But it's smart to attack Stady because she does have one foul. It changes the game plan for Joni Taylor if you can get Stady in foul trouble. Dawn Staley now in her 14th season, winners of the 2017 National Championship. She will also take over the U.S. Olympic team. And they have just been the dominant force, winners of five of the last eight regular season SEC titles and six of the last eight tournament titles, including a win over Georgia in last year's final. Cook. And Barker boards. You've got to show layers defensively if you're Georgia. You've got to stay underneath South Carolina's defense as Sarah Ashley Barker takes it to the hole. And one opportunity. Challenging South Carolina's transition defense. This is a tremendous decision and great take by Sarah Ashley Barker, the six-foot sophomore for Georgia. Stady going to grab another offensive rebound. This will be a huge story if Georgia can out-rebound the Gamecocks. They've only been out-rebounded once, and that was by Stanford. Right now it's a 6-1 advantage for the Bulldogs. South Carolina will have it here. Joni Taylor, last year's SEC Coach of the Year, made it to the SEC Tournament Final and to the second round of the NCAA Tournament. Former assistant for the legendary Andy Landers, who's in the studio for us today. Wearing her Delta colors. It's a... Uh, Special promotion going on here at Georgia tonight, or today. It's called the Divine Nine Game, where they're inviting members and alumni of nine historically black fraternities and sororities to attend the game, and they'll be honored at each quarter. Oh boy, is that number two on Stady on the screen? Oh wow. I mean, so two whistles on her in the first four minutes here. And she's walking to the bench, like, dejected, and knowing that with six minutes to play in the first quarter, this changes the game for Joni Taylor and for the Georgia Bulldogs. Dejected, 6-5, Jenna Stady. Write that down, Beth, six minutes six, in the first quarter, six, second foul. 6 a foul on her offensively and defensively. And, and like cheap fouls, right? I mean, you got to get your money's worth if you're going to foul yeah. in the South Carolina game. And that could be big for the Gamecocks here. Boston will step away. And it's Ia Cook off the bounce. This is the third foul drawn already by Aaliyah Boston. Two on Stady, and now another one on a Georgia big. Well, Georgia's going to have to adjust to the official's yep. whistle. Mm -hmm. well, it just goes to show you, too, what a handful she can be on both ends of the court, Aaliyah Boston. Pretty on the spin. And the lay-in for Brie Beal. So aggressive off the bounce. Really nice spin move by Brie Beal. In pass. 
passing lanes on both sides of the court. Beal with the pick. Anderson spins into a double. Good D by Morrison. Boston looking, trying to get a touch for Victoria Saxton inside. Victoria up to the elbow. And will chase down her own miss. South Carolina offensive rebounds, 48% of their misses. That is an incredibly high number. That's why they get so many points in the paint. And that's why their rebound margin is the best in all the land, as Sexton is fouled on the shot. Bree Beal putting on the deck, spins back, finishes off the glass. Well, the story early on, Jenna Stady under four minutes of action today and has already picked up a couple of fouls. Great strategy continues just like last year, Debbie, for South Carolina. Attack her with Aaliyah Boston and get her out early. Not even four minutes of play, as you said, Beth. And it, it, it changes and opens up the middle. Uh, now Joni Taylor has to go a little bit deeper into her bench. And... You know, Stady has only scored a combined 12 points in the last two games. Could be part of the reason why they've lost two in a row. Yeah. And Aaliyah Boston already with four points and a trip to the free throw line. Here's Victoria Saxton toeing the stripe. Victoria, the senior out of Rome, Georgia. Two times a captain of this squad. And this is where I think Dawn Staley and her staff do an excellent job of game planning four opponents, yeah. right? Their strength is on the interior. Everyone's committed to getting the ball inside. And now off of free throws, a situational defensive possession here for South Carolina. Where they're trying to stretch the D a little bit, and they're forced to turn over. Well, it's, and, and it's playing through Aaliyah Boston. It's gonna be fun the next couple of days for women's basketball fans. And, um, so we got Aaliyah Boston today, the pounded in the paint, everything goes through her, National Player of the Year contender. We got Caitlin Clark tomorrow. The perimeter player always has the ball in her hands, has to score, has to distribute. She's playing tomorrow night against Maryland. And we'll get to see both sides of that. And, and so much of what Aaliyah does, get her a touch. Well, either she scores, Debbie, or she creates opportunities for others. I think it's undervalued how she's added layers to her game yeah. every year and how she's been able to face up and step away. Her freshman year, she's on the block, pounding away. She's got a retooled body, and she's got a reconfigured skill set facing up. And so that makes her even more dangerous because they can play her in the high-low game. She's a facilitator to reverse the ball, but she also can score from the top of the floor in the middle third. There are her metrics and the improvement that she's made, including down there at the bottom, dropping 8% body fat, adding more muscle. And she and Saxton today. So they draw two fouls on Jenna Stady, who gets replaced by Mallory Bates, and now Mallory Bates has two fouls. Off the bounce, into the lane, coast to coast, Michaela Coombs. That's what Georgia has to do if South Carolina is going to open up the floor in their full court pressure. you got to look to attack going downhill. Watch Michaela Coombs switch sides of the floor, gets ahead of the South Carolina defense, gets to the front of the rim, uncontested. And the turnover for Georgia. That's their fifth already. Just one turnover for South Carolina here in this first quarter. And the 11-8 Gamecocks lead. The more stoppage of play, the better for Georgia. Because they need to be organized defensively in their quarter court. They're very good when they're not playing in transition and they can defend inside out. But you have to know where Destiny Henderson is. She's their best three-point shooter by percentage. At 40% on the season for the senior from Fort Myers, Florida. Zaya Cook also has made the most, but Destiny has the best percentage. And 
of the South Carolina defense, night in and night out, so difficult to score on. They have forced more turnovers here in the first quarter than allowed baskets, only four of them. Looking for back-to-back -back triples, and they'll get it as Cook follows up Henderson's three. Running the floor hard and wide, back-to-back -back triples in each corner because they're really spreading out the defense for Georgia, and they're, they're not getting there in time to close out. Lee Hall thought about trying another one. Lily Grissett looking to Boston, who steps away. And now Leah going to work. Yeah. How about a 13-2 run, Debbie, since Stady had to go to the bench? Look, one on one, forget about it. You know, if you can't make her play in a crowd, I mean, she's even gotten better at stepping through double teams as Q Morrison hits a big bucket. But Aaliyah Boston, one on one, when she gets over that left shoulder, forget about it. It's two points. Number two minutes to go in the quarter. Henderson looking for another one. So a team that doesn't rely on the triple a whole lot will take them if they're open. They only average five a game. They already have three in the first quarter. And a foul here defensively on South Carolina. And we'll remind you, a big Monday men's doubleheader for you with Virginia, Virginia Tech starting at seven. And then it's Oklahoma State, Kansas tomorrow night at nine. The big women's game tomorrow night, Debbie, Iowa and Maryland. That Big Ten finish may be the best in the Power Five leagues this year with five teams still fighting it out, including those two. I love the way the Big Ten Conference has that wild card game at the end so they can manipulate TV schedules to be able to put mm -hmm. the best games on. And there are a lot of good games in that league right now. And Maryland has won six in a row. Brenda Fries' team is trending in the right Look direction. Look for the Terps, they're healthy again. As for Iowa, there are a couple games out of first place, but they play all the teams that they still need to beat in front of them. They can pull it off. That's Caitlin Clark tomorrow night against Diamond Miller and the Terps. There's a swipe. And that could lead to the lay-in the other way for Hall. Taken away by Cook. Is this the same South Carolina team that played Kentucky the other night? Because it doesn't look anything like the same team. 18-4 to 4 run since Stady left. They only scored 59 points in that game. That's the least amount of points they've scored all season. They're doing it at both ends of the floor in this first quarter. And there's Boston with a block. The defensive ball pressure has been outstanding. Look at Cook. You present the ball in front of her. Combs loses the handle because Cook's hands are active mm -hmm. in front, doing a good job of keeping in front of your defender, of your off offensive player you're guarding. They can get a two for one right here. They've made their last five shots. Boston, oh, quick off the bounce and the blow by for two. There is that athleticism and that incredibly retooled body. So quick with that spin move. Look for South Carolina maybe to throw a little trap right here. Oh, really good gap turnover. coverage in the middle third, but a, a poor pass. That's what happens if South Carolina speeds you up, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta make a decision quickly. Five seconds to get a shot off. Cook will launch from deep and hit. A game that was tied at six. And then the 23 to four outburst. Four for four outside the three point line. Logo distance for Zaya Cook. Uh, looking every bit like the number one ranked team in the country, South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina getting Georgia's bigs in foul trouble early. The defensive end, they have created more turnovers than baskets allowed. And a 23-4 run after the second foul on Jenna Stady. Well, I mean, 62% from the floor is outstanding. South Carolina has only missed six shots, and they've offensive rebounded three of them. 
which is right on par with their 48%, a little bit better. And their offensive rebounding, they've got some tip steals, they've been disruptive. And they scored 59 in the last game. They're on pace for 120. Oof. And if you're Joni Taylor, you say to your team, we were down 20 at LSU and we came back and made it a game. And when do you put Stady back? I was going to say, I mean, like how much do you, how much separation do you allow before the game yeah. gets to it a point where it's too challenging to come back? It won't matter in the third quarter, right? If they're down even more than they are now, that'll be a decision coming up. Reagan Richardson coming off a career high 17 points in 17 minutes against LSU. Maybe Andy Landers can answer this for us in the studio at halftime. I mean, is it too early to go offense, defensive possessions with a player like Stady? Put her on the floor for when you can for offense. Take her off when you can for defense. Does it, how much does that affect the rhythm of your team? But you don't have a rhythm well, right and, now. And if so you don't have a whole lot of stoppages, it's hard to get her in and out of the game. Well, there's been a lot of stoppages. That, that would be one of the things you'd have to monitor. Tanea Hilton, the freshman who's getting more and more playing time since she joined the squad out of high school in January. Hong said, not quite 100% with that knee. You can see that it has caused a problem for her explosiveness, but hey, you're going against the, the experience of Aaliyah Boston. Yeah. That's challenging for any freshman. That's any the, player, forget yeah. about freshman. Well, that's one of the things, too, that this South Carolina team has going for it. They will get an opportunity for a three-point play here. They, they've got experience at every spot on the floor, Debbie. And they have 11 mm -hmm. high school All-Americans on their roster. And the talent. <laughs> <laughs> and Bree Hall with a great take off the bounce with contact. The player that I'm looking forward to seeing for South Carolina is Samaya Rivers, number 44, the 6'1 freshman. I, I can't wait to see what she's going to be yeah. under Dawn Staley as she continues to grow and mature. Don't forget, too, this is the first of our uh, double header over on ESPN at 2 Eastern. It's Notre Dame and Louisville. Right now, South Carolina, Louisville, Stanford, and North Carolina State are your one seeds. And Stady is back in the game now for Georgia. Snares the rebound. And a hell ball will go to the Gamecocks. Yeah, I, I, I like it, Joni Taylor. You got to put her in the game, yep. right? You got to get her back in and see if she can can contain Alea Boston somewhat with some help and be a factor on the offensive end scoring because they need her offense. It's been well balanced for Carolina so far. 14 points in the paint, 12 on the perimeter. So they've added that three-point shooting. They've been getting to the free throw line as well. A little bit of everything. Little pick, little roll, and a bucket. What a nice pass by Rivers. Good cut to the bucket by Lili Grissett. Lili playing in her 12th game this year. A grad student out of Durham, North Carolina, and Stady is fouled on the reach. Got our Super Tuesday double header on the men's side, Wake and Duke. Debbie's going to be on the call for that one Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. And then Kentucky, Tennessee in a sonic blockbuster at 9 Eastern. Both games on ESPN, also on the app. Coach K only has three home Finale, games man. remaining. Wake Forest coming off a loss, but you know what? The two candidates for ACC Player of the Year on the men's side, Alondis Williams leads the league in scoring and in assists. That hasn't happened in the league since they started keeping track of assists like in 73. That's never happened. So that's interesting against all the talent of the Blue Devils, which is very similar to all the talent we're seeing here in South Carolina. <laughs> and the Dukies send out Coach K with another national championship. Here's Rivers. She'll pull up mid-range and oh, knock it down. Yeah. I'm telling you, I can't wait to see what Sanaya Rivers becomes in a Gamecock uniform. She's gotten a little bit of time here and there, but Dawn Saley might be able to get a little deeper into that bench. Freshman out of Wilmington, North Carolina, three times the state player of the year. Here she is in the trail position. And 
spins into a double team. Good help defense right there by Jordan Isaacs. That's where decision making is going to come through experience and reps and playing at the pace of play that you play when you're in the SEC on the road. Yeah. Can they come up with something to disrupt the South Carolina attack? Eight players have been on the floor. All eight have scored. They are shooting 68% from the floor so far today. I think South Carolina decided they wanted to play. Stady around and out. Well, they got some big news this week that College Game Day is coming to Columbia, folks. February 20th for that Tennessee game. And an offensive foul going to be called here on Bree Hall. That's her second. You know what? That's going to look nice on film tomorrow. I think Dawn Staley's going to like that one. That's a pretty good take off the bounce. She did create some contact. The official, in his judgment, thought that she pre initiated the contact. That's why the foul was called. I hate to see points come off the board. Anybody's points come off the board. The 10th turnover and a blocking foul called and one. Saniah Fagan, the freshman who is going to have an opportunity to show her stuff today, Debbie. Yeah, look at this take right here. You have to referee the defense. Q Morrison was outside the restricted area, but she's not in a legal guarding position. It's a good call by the official. Don Staley, talking to his pregame, said they have encouraged Fagan to be aggressive, get to the rim with some of the other bigs missing from the roster again today she'll get a chance playing alongside rivers another outstanding recruiting class back-to-back -back number ones at south carolina and another steal fagan gets it henderson drops it my goodness all they carolina here in the first half fire now they're shooting 71%. Their percentage continues to go up. Rivers uh, tried to thread the needle. Not just on the offensive end, Debbie, but on the defensive end, they have allowed five baskets in 14 minutes. That's it. I was at shoot-around this morning at 7 o'clock. I listened to Joni Taylor break down her game plan with her young team. She told them exactly what they needed to do to be able to compete in this game. And South Carolina is overpowering at every position right now on the floor. Save to Stadium. And there is Jenna's first basket on just her second shot attempt. Limited with the foul trouble here in the first half. That's uh, their first bucket in four minutes. Saxton, Victoria, back in the state of Georgia, the Rome, Georgia native. Her high school team's in the house today cheering her on. Defensive rebound, and they will push once again. Rivers calling for it on the wing. Open look. Long rebound to Barker. Stady filling the lane. Missed it. Second chance, no. And they'll get a third look. After Zalisha Smith couldn't put it down. South Carolina switching that middle pick and roll. House in the house inside. Good recognition by Morrison. And a foul on the shot just as the buzzer was expiring. Back to Athens in a moment. I'll tell you what, this is uh, uh, impressive.
Well, what they've been able to do here, again, the game was tied at 6-6. Jenna Stady picked up her second foul, and they just stepped on the gas. Jenna has been reinserted into the game, but as they referenced, I mean, the field goal percentage is off the charts. The defense holding Georgia to six baskets here in the first half. I mean, I love offense, so I'm not having any problem watching the execution <laughs> of the slice and the dice of Dawn uh, Staley's offensive machine right yes. now. It's incredible. I mean, uh, I'm sure Rebecca is hoping it's going to be like this on game day when they show up down oh, there. Oh, it's going to be nuts down right? there. Oh, my the goodness. Tennessee game, the game, by the way, is now on ABC. I just want to uh, take part in a little tailgating pregame. Is anybody going to, are they going to bring a caboose over to... Uh, I don't know. To the Listen, parking lot? That parking lot is lit, right? The oh. South Carolina fans tailgating We've out there. We've had a good time out there. We've it's had good, a burger out there pregame before. <laughs> Post-game beverage. Well, it's better than sitting in traffic. It's because gonna, you definitely oh. got post-game traffic at South Carolina. That is going to be terrific. And that will be against Tennessee, the team that sits just one game behind them right now in the SEC standings. And it, I mean, you got to understand, Dawn Stanley, we talked to her about the grind of this point in February, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. so they still are in, evolving and emerging with their depth. I mean, we know that their first five mm -hmm. can win, okay? But they're going to need other pieces, and that's why you're seeing Dawn continue to keep the pressure on and continue to keep her players on the floor because they're still working for a bigger vision in mind. Mm -hmm. Nice three there from Barker. Well, the SEC, I mean, heady, heady times are, uh, are coming back with what Dawn has done at the top of the league. Um, you know, Harper, Kelly Harper's got it going to Tennessee. Joni's got it going here. Of course, you got the return of Kim Mulkey at LSU. Right now, they are moving up the charts. Got some big coaching jobs to fill as well with uh, Gary Blair's retirement at Texas A&M. Florida's going to have to make a choice. Look, Kelly Ray Finley has won eight of Been their fabulous. last nine games. Yeah. Okay. Scott Strickland might not have a tough decision no. on that. Maybe able He's to the athletic director at Florida. Stay in house. Question, question, question is how much money in the bank for Texas A&M to offer up for a lot of money. Coaches, <laughs> back up <laughs> the truck. <laughs> Russ Bjork is going to hire a big time name oh, for that yeah. job. Yeah. Hey, we heard from Andy Landers in the studio, and congratulations to Andy. Uh, he is uh, the newest member of the Circle of Honor here at Georgia. And there he is. Most importantly, yes. don't forget Pam. Don't miss out on <laughs> Pam in that photo. She's always been in the Circle of Trust. <laughs> Andy's wife, of course, that's yes. a wonderful shot of Andy and Joni. Joni served on his staff mm -hmm. for many years. Yeah. And then Hugh Durham, how about? Coach Durham, his name's all over Georgia Athletics. Coach Landers uh, in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame with five trips to the Final Four. And of course, that is the ultimate destination that Joni Taylor and company are trying to work towards. Is this the group that can do it? On that banner, that's, uh, that's Andy Landers. Got his stamp all over that. So does Janet Harris and Teresa Edwards and Katrina McClain. Oh, yeah. Saudi around tree. Don't the, forget the Miller Susie sisters. Gardner. Susie Gardner, yeah. my favorite Georgia shooter of all time. All right, the dogs are barking a little bit here, Debbie. An 8 0 run over the last minute. And if Lisa O'Connor saw me in the street and I didn't mention her, her name, she might <laughs> take me out. <laughs> what great players and what classy people. Oh, and yeah. The way they've represented our game from Andy's. Fabulous run. Underneath Andy's umbrella. Shout out Lakeisha Frett. Whistle and a foul, and that will be on South Carolina and Victoria Sexton. It's her first. Well, if you can score here and get a couple of stops and score again, I mean, to get it inside 20, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you're thinking. Little, you're little victories. Yes. Look, Joni Taylor's not going to go over there and lay down and quit. I mean, 
And neither is Dorsale's going to keep applying what they need to apply because she wants to play for a national championship. And every rep you get with your team at this point in the season matters. And we're getting down to it now. After today, most teams in the country only have four or five games left. Well, South Carolina will be the overwhelming favorite in the SEC tournament. Yeah. They'll be, they're the overall number one seed. It looks most likely headed to Greensboro. Yeah. Got to wait till Selection Sunday, though, to get confirmation. Ten unanswered points for Georgia, and it is a 20-point game. Boston is back in the game. The spin to the middle and a foul, and who's it going to be on? Do not call it on number one, four in white. Looked okay. Like it was, looks like it was the helper. Yep. <laughs> that's on Nicholson. Oh, well, that's her third. Okay. Well, so the bigs have just had their hands full with Boston and company today, Debbie. Boston is so much quicker with her post moves inside. And such great footwork on the interior. Hey, how about a Wednesday night doubleheader from the NBA? And we'll start things off uh, in Big Apple. It's Nets and Knicks at 7.30 Eastern. And then Utah and the Los Angeles Lakers. ESPN's coverage will start with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern. By the way, you and Doris Burke and the rest of the crew, and Lisa, and Lisa Saunders, I mean, outstanding job last Wednesday night. It was a lot of fun. It was really all, great. All female crew. You know what? I, the Jazz beat the Warriors. I listened. It was just a regular game. It Wait, was you awesome. Listened, you listened to one of my games? I, well, I was listening to Doris. First, oh, I was dang, actually listening I knew it. to Doris. I knew it. Well, those two have set the standard for a long time now in the NBA. Great to be a part of that. 35 women in front of and behind the cameras for that, that game. Don't forget, too, tomorrow night we're going to find out who goes into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, right, Debbie? Yes. I was, talking to, my, I was talking to my friends in the desert after your fabulous K. Yao halftime <laughs> on last Monday night. Your odds have increased. Oh. There, there is a chance. Oh, I tell you what. Highlighted by Becky Hammond. Uh, who I, I think will be a shoe in at this point, but we'll find out tomorrow during the Maryland Iowa game. Back in a moment. Charlie Cream, uh, make sure you follow Charlie at ESPN.com. He pretty much puts out a new bracket uh, daily now, but there are your number one seeds and your number two seeds. Interestingly enough, both Michigan and Arizona lost. Since that went out, NC State was pushed to overtime this week. Um, I, I think a lot, for a lot of folks, South Carolina and Stanford have moved a little bit ahead of the pack. We know NC State and Louisville will not play again in the regular season. They could in the ACC yeah. tournament. I think the ones are solid. I don't see any change yeah. there. Uh, the twos could move. And certainly the host bubble line continues to evolve yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. Rolled up and in by Destiny Henderson. Shout out to Bill Fenley and the folks at Iowa State, by the way. They are still with a shot at, at the Big 12 regular season championship, which Kim Mulkey and Baylor have dominated for so long. 11 straight or 12 mm -hmm. straight. Chance for a last second bucket, and that one will not go. Working on a 100-point game right now. South Carolina up on Georgia. John and Rebecca and Circle of Honoree, Andy Landers, back in the studio. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Top rack South Carolina, a dominant 20 minutes. They led by as many as 30, and they scored 51 on a Georgia defense, which doesn't give up a whole lot more than that 
for a full 40 minutes. Beth Mowen's courtside with Debbie Antonelli, and everybody got involved. Everybody that got in the game scored, and they were doing it on both ends. Well, I'm impressed with South Carolina's balance. They've been a team that's dominated points in the paint. They got 22 points of their 51 inside, which means they shot the three better. They moved the ball better. I mean, they were four for four in the first quarter from the three-point line. So when you're trying to play a cover two defense, if you will, on football, nice. I see Super Bowl Sunday, see that. try to play underneath and keep them in front, they knock down triples, and that's where that balance makes them really challenging to defend. Yep. Ton of points off turnovers, ton of points in transition. The bench getting involved. Aaliyah Boston and Destiny Henderson with 10 apiece. Nine points for Jenna Stady, six for Q Morrison. Okay. All right, Dawn Staley, just kind of keep rolling through that playbook right there. I love that clear out in the two-man game with Aaliyah Boston and Destiny Henderson. That is challenging to defend anywhere. Stady and Boston. Barker gets into the lane, spins and gets the bounce. So if you're Joni Taylor, you're looking at this like, can we cut this deficit in half by the start of the fourth quarter? And if you're South Carolina, you do not take the foot off the gas, right? You're, you're still grinding towards that, I don't want to say perfect game, but trying to continue to get better. Beal around and out. It'd be big for Georgia to just win the second half. And you mentioned it in the, uh, earlier today, they, they almost overcame a 20-point deficit against LSU. And come back to win, fell a bit short. The Tigers have gotten them twice this year. And the foul is going to be on Sexton. That will be her second. The high-low game has been somewhat successful for Georgia in the first half. They were able to complete a couple of those plays, and they had a few others open that they didn't complete with the pass. They need somebody to get hot. Look, Sarah Ashley Barker is due to get hot. Beal gonna take it coast to coast to rolls around and down. When Bree Hill, Bree Beal, excuse me, is playing downhill, that's when she is at her best. She's not a catch and shoot standstill. She is a big solid frame that can score on most matchups in the paint. Boston with the rebound, her third. Good hustle by Q Morrison. See, those are the turnovers that Dawn Staley just can't wrap her head around. That is too long of a pass. Q Morrison anticipates. It's a great hustle play by Q Morrison for Georgia. And Saxton just picked up her third personal. Stady. A little short, Boston boards again. Clearing out a side again for Boston. Gets to the baseline, gets to the block. Stady with a deflection. Coombs. Morrison with the rebound. to work it down to the low block and a bucket for Nicholson. Look, if you know anything about Joni Taylor and the culture that she has continued to evolve here after Andy, it's been about hard work and discipline. And I, I thought she had an incredible game focus early on this morning. So did her team. But look, South Carolina just totally, I mean, dominated the first half offensively and on the defensive end. And so now you've got to fi find some fight within you to try to make this a workable margin to the fourth quarter. I know they're not going to quit. Saxton able to get the basket inside. And the foul will be called offensive against Georgia. And that's Nicholson's fourth. Okay, did she lean into it, or was she not set before the ball handler came off the screen? Or did the contact make it look like she was pulled away from her 
cylinder, if you will. Feet to the ceiling. My initial is a no to all of the above, <laughs> but. Oh, oh Morrison Q, come on, Q. And That's what we're here for. Top 10 moment for Q Morrison. When Q Morrison came to Georgia, she was a shy little freshman. She has matured into an incredible young woman, but also a great competitor for Joni Taylor. That is beautiful. Those are the kind of moves that put her on the Dawn Staley Award watch list for top point guard in the country. Coach Staley making a mental note over there. <laughs> All right, I'll get that to the committee. South Carolina playing with a little bit of a smaller lineup with Grissett at the four. Henderson steps back. Doesn't and matter. Sets for two. <laughs> I mean, it's really incredible. The number one team, the number one overall seed right now, playing like the number one team. Yeah. Get down, offensive rebound. Tipped, Boston has it. And numbers now for South Carolina with the three on one. Cook will step out beyond the arc as opposed to attacking the rim. I think when you sprint to the corner versus sliding to the corner, yeah. it's a different feel for a shooter. She was backpedaling to the corner. You know, there's only 17 panels from the end line to pieces the three-point line in the corner. I counted them. 17 pieces of wood? Yeah, 17 panels. What's the shoe size on that? Uh, is that like a men's 15 or something? That, no, there's not no, a whole no. lot of room, is there? No, there's not a lot of room. But you, you, I've sized up a size 22 over there in the corner before. Yeah. On the women's side, I don't know. I saw his 12 would be a big foot. Do you see a lot of people stepping out of bounds I, over there? Is that the? Yeah. That's why I count. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm interested. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something with that next time we're, we're together. I'm gonna do something creative. I think that's the that. Iowa-Michigan game in a couple Let's of weeks. Let's do too. it. We're gonna talk a lot of threes oh, in that Iowa-Michigan yes. game. Boston, again. 14 points, five rebounds. You know, Michigan won the first meeting, but Caitlin yes. Clark only had 46 in that one. How about a 27 point, 26 point fourth quarter? Stady, nice little turn. Caitlin Clark, you know, we were talking earlier about Wake Forest on the men's side. Alondis Williams leading the ACC in scoring and assists. You know, Caitlin Clark leads the nation in those categories on the women's side. Hey, we'll see Clark tomorrow night and today enjoying Aaliyah Boston. I mean, Boston. So quick with a spin. Boom. Big finish inside. 2017 and a winner of the national championship for South Carolina. Last year they went back to the national semis. But uh, we thought we'd take a look at the junior seasons for Asia Wilson and Aaliyah Boston and look at how similar they are. Wilson capped it off with the natty. Can Boston do the same? It's amazing how impressive those numbers are, yeah. right? And, and actually, I think Aaliyah Boston's face-up game has evolved a little bit faster than Asia. Mm -hmm. So that would be one difference in their junior years to, to me. But I also think that Aaliyah has a lot more talent around her mm -hmm. with 10 other McDonald's All-Americans. Yeah. So, um, you know, well, I mean, what are you going to do? Put two statues in front of Colonial Life? If she arena? wins the championship? Yeah. When, I think when you got. They, I think you got to consider put it. Don Staley's name on the floor, by the way. Let's yeah. get all kinds okay, of trends going. Okay, let's start doing going. that. Don Staley, right, 100 Don Staley behind court. court. Yeah, 100 percent behind that. I think the thing with with a Asia, she was the local product. She was the one that started it all. But I'm sure there's some money around down there to get a second bronze if they get another. We're gonna find it. Championship. Back in a moment. <laughs> Top rack, South Carolina. At 22 and one. Yeah, taking it to Georgia so far today. Don Staley, that national championship, the 11 SEC crowns, Coach of the Year honors. The U.S. Olympics, too, coming up. 
Don't forget that uh, $22.4 million seven-year yes. contract that yes. is guaranteed $2.9 million this year. Continuing to elevate the game. Well, Kim Mulkey only got like $3 million, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Coach Mulkey at LSU got a big back on the bayou. Yeah, that, and, and what an incredible job she's done. Yes. And, and instantly, they are in the top 16. Mm -hmm. And that environment in the PMAC will be outstanding oh, for yeah. the NCAA tournament. Boston with the take. If they get to host, they would be on our host bubble right now. Charlie Cream's got him as a four seed. I got Remember, you need, you need to be a four or higher. Georgia is very much on the host bubble, along with the likes of Florida, Maryland, Virginia Tech, North Carolina. What will those teams do down the stretch? How about LSU, Notre Dame, Oregon, and Texas? They are your four seeds right now. Texas, a big win over OU yesterday. Well, the game coming up right after us big, is big, yeah, big. Notre Dame at, at Louisville. Mm -hmm. Coach Walls, you know, will have his team ready to play. I think uh, their balance is probably one of their best assets on the offensive end. And you know they're going to yeah. D up teams. You know, at the beginning of the year, I was saying Dana who, in reference to Dana Evans, who is a back-to-back -back ACC Player of the Year for Jeff Walls, and it's because it's a program. It's not a one-year team. It's not a per. It's not just the one. Just show up. They're going to be the number one As good as she was. Seat. I think he's had the ACC Player of the Year four of the last five years. Yeah. And was it five of six? Five of six, maybe. Yes. Four straight ACC titles. They've got Notre Dame coming up next on ESPN. And then tomorrow night, Iowa and Maryland. A really interesting matchup in the Louisville-Notre Dame game that I think probably wasn't something we looked at at the beginning of the season is Maya Dotson for Notre Dame and Olivia Cochran for Louisville. Both of those players would be on my most improved post players in the country list. They both have done a magnificent job inside their own systems, being a factor. There's Q Morrison. Q. What a take. Coming through. And hustles back down the other end to get in front of Destiny Henderson. All right, now here's the, some of the late game slippage you're trying to fight against if you're South Carolina. They've missed seven of their last eight shots. And Georgia's still playing hard. Anderson checks the play clock, about an 11 second difference. I mean, South Carolina had 51 points at the half. And then we have 10 here in this third quarter, so Georgia has done a better job defensively. Outscoring them here in the third. Buzzer beater coming. Off the mark from Henderson. Fourth quarter coming up when we return, 61-40, Carolina. Specifically for me, I would say Thurgood Marshall, um, the first African-American Supreme Court Justice, uh, Jackie Robinson, um, the first African-American to play in the major leagues, um, and Harriet Tubman. She led an entire group of people. Um, to beat that oppression and to, you know, help change millions of lives. Hey, for more storytelling, stream the Black History Always collection on ESPN+. Plus. Beth Mullins, Debbie Antonelli with your courtside. John Brickley, Rebecca Lobo, Andy Landers back in the studio. The first game of our double header. It continues over on ESPN with Louisville and Notre Dame. So a good look at two teams right now that are number one seeds, according to 
the NCAA selection committee after its second reveal. One more reveal to come before the postseason begins. You like the reveals? You like I, I think it, they're good conversation starters, yeah. absolutely. I especially like that now we're putting them into their regions as well so you can track where teams are going. May help the fans be able to, hey, maybe we'll pick up some tickets for that if we think we're going there. Maybe. Remember, geography is still uh, plays a role in the women's game. Not where you're seated, but where you might be sent to play. Good duck in. Basket is good, Zoesha Smith. The other uh, new development this year in the postseason, the um, women are adding the first four. So there will be double headers that first Wednesday and Thursday night now, the women's tournament. And I believe at least two of those games will be at one seed. So it's possible that, say, a South Carolina, they may not know who their opponent is until that first four game is played. And that would be played in Columbia. You know, I'm always looking at how and why things happen inside our game. I would really love to consider a, a shuffle of the bottom of the format so yeah. that, you know, those teams that are 16s and 15s actually have a chance to have a postseason experience of winning. You yeah. know they're going to have a great experience being in the tournament, but, you know, only one time in the history of our game is a 16 beat a 1, and that was extenuating circumstances a long time ago. That yeah. was Allison Feaster, the leading scorer in the country at Harvard against a depleted, depleted Stanford Tara team. Vanderveer Stanford team. Uh, actually, that experience still has altered the way Tara Vanderveer prepares for the NCAA tournament because she's fearful of injuries. Nobody likes to talk about that. But I would love to see, you know, a, a reshuffle at the bottom. Since we got 68, give those teams a chance to play their way in. Maybe take the bottom eight teams and have a little play-in game to play the ones. Yep and the twos. No harm, no foul on that if you're going to go ahead and play some games earlier than the traditional 64. I'd love to see them play it on home floors, too, so you get the yes. NCAA tournament experience with your own fans in the gym. I mean, we have enough trouble selling out four regionals. We're going to create another situation where we're going to have NCAA games played in the first four, if you will, on a it's all good conversation yeah. to have because it's all for the betterment of the game and constantly improving and talking about different ways to do things. We just don't have enough formats mm -hmm. or platforms to have conversation about these things. Off the crossover, Morrison. Maria Boston with the rebound. Uh, now one shy of his, another double-double. She's got 16 in a row. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Wow, look at Saxon on the glass. I love Try that whole set. Three repertoire. Well, you know, you, you switch sides of the floor, you reverse the ball, you attack baseline, you throw it back up to the top. The defense is already sucked down to the level of the ball. Aaliyah Boston is wide open at the top. She missed the shot, but it was good execution in terms of rhythm and this kind of quality of shot you want to get. She's got 11 triples on the year. I mean, uh, we were talking to Dawn Staley before the game about you and I were on the call, the UConn game at South Carolina when Aaliyah Boston took her very first triple. Was that last year? Two, two, two years ago? A couple of years ago. It's the first time South Carolina was able to beat, and Dawn Staley was able to beat Gina yep. Oriana. I think that was an eight tries, maybe, if I remember right. Yeah, it was funny because we were having that same conversation on the way over to the gym this morning. And she's taking her game outside. How about this feat, by the way, for Dawn Staley? The first head coach to ever beat Gino, Tara, and Mulkey in the same season. Those three big wins for their resume. They're 5-0 and against the top 10. They're 9-0, and going to be 10-0 and against ranked opponents this year. No one has played the schedule that they have played. So when it comes to refining your play in March, they will have seen everything, and they will be ready, and they will be really tough to knock out. 
They have the most quality wins in the net as well. That was a nice hustle play right there by Zoisha Smith. The and then Boston scores. You still got to play underneath and protect inside out because they did start four for four from the three-point line, but they're 0 for eight from the three-point line since the first quarter. Oh, a Freddie Brown pass to Destiny Henderson, and one. Here's a little bit of confusion. Nice reference of Freddie Brown, yeah. Georgetown, to James, to James Worthy. Worthy, North Carolina for the national championship game. Google that one, kids. There's no foul there, was there? Did she hit her yeah. after? I don't know. Must have clipped her. Thought she was trying to avoid it. Good numbers for Destiny on six of eight shooting from the floor today. I mean, if you, Debbie, if you have, you, we've talked about it, if you have the perimeter players knocking down their shots, uh, you know, with Boston doing what she does inside, that's that's ball game. Well, and, and then there's Saxton, right? Yeah. And then you can put Lee Lee Grissett in there, and you're missing two, Cardoso and Ami yeah. here, who are with their national teams trying to qualify through FIBA. For the world championships right so i mean it just it's a it's a you look down the bench and you got to earn playing time yeah. in practice we know that dawn staley is going to want her team to earn playing time in practice that's how you get on the floor and georgia fans hoping all is okay here with jenna stady that's helped up a hand slap from zaya cook well, Tremendous yeah. respect for the yes. games of both these sides. Well, and remember, I mean, if you didn't tune in at the beginning, Jenna Stady picked up two quick fouls for Georgia before we got to six minutes in the first quarter. So she had to sit for a while, and North, uh, South Carolina was on a run. Well, and you want to keep her healthy, too, because you've got four games left on the schedule. Missouri at Auburn at Arkansas and then Texas A&M at home where you you may have to sweep that to be right there in position to get a four seed or higher as you check it out you can see them all on the uh, SEC Network uh, ESPN plus offensive foul there and a charge taken by Zoisha Smith who has uh, shown up and shown out tonight Debbie Today, excuse me. Yeah, uh, they have moved her from the four to the three and added to her face up game. Zoisha Smith, number zero in white. Aaliyah Boston has also checked out of the lineup. 16 points, nine rebounds. Oops, Davies right back in there and scoring. Doesn't look like she feels too good on that ankle, though. You know, you mentioned Missouri coming in here next for Georgia. You know, Robin Pinchton is the only coach with a win over Dawn Stanley this year. South Carolina losing on the road at Missouri. Now, you know the game plan is 10 feet in the paint when Robin Pinchton's team yes. is playing South Carolina. Yes. Got it. Much, much love from the Lady Devils of Model High School in Rome, Georgia, who are in the house tonight, rooting on Victoria Saxton, one of their favorite grads. I listened to Dawn Stanley's post game after the Kentucky game, talking about what a star Victoria is. As you take a look at the high school team, there they are. There, the Lady Devils. You know, are they, up there. here's a lesson for all. They reached out to us on social media, Debbie, and we saw it before the game on our on our Twitter, and we went up and said hello. Hey, you guys want to be on TV? Send us a little Twitter action pregame. We'll see what we can do. So, shout out to the Lady Devils of Model High School. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, from Aaliyah Boston to today to Caitlin Clark tomorrow night at nine o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. Look at the numbers between these two Player of the Year frontrunners. Let's start the conversation right here. From the scoring, the rebounding, assists and blocks to the triple doubles and double doubles, Debbie. 
Well, Caitlin Clark has a ball in her hands all the time. Five triple doubles, leads the nation in scoring and assists. And Leah Boston is quite simply the most powerful little post person yep. in, in our game. And she can dominate inside. She's got a high post game. And she has a lot of talent around her as well. It's an argument since uh, we first hung the peach baskets up. Who's the more important, the more valuable? Is it that guard that it has to initiate everything with the ball in their hands? Is it the big girl that everything has to go through or go above and beyond on the other end of the floor? It's great to be able to watch both do their thing. Here's Boston. Can she get another rebound, by the way, for to add to that double-double total? Well, right now, South Carolina's getting out-rebounded. That yeah. would be one thing that Dawn Selly will look on the box score and not like tomorrow. There it is. And a 17th double-double in a row for Leah Boston. Actually, what do I talk about tomorrow? I'm talking about, like, in 15 minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this game started out 6-6, and then Jenna Stady picked up her second quick foul. And South Carolina finished out the first quarter on a 23-4 run. It's been all Gamecock since. And looking very much like the team to beat as the overall number one seed right now. I don't foresee that changing. They have Auburn, Tennessee, A&M, and Ole Miss left in the regular yeah. season. Although not a lot of people saw them losing to Missouri either, and that happened, so... It's been a wild yeah. season. A lot of upsets around. A lot of parity around. We'll see Auburn uh, or, uh, South Carolina again on Thursday night on the SEC Network taking on Auburn. And then Gary Blair's last go-round, his retirement season. Texas A&M taking on Ole Miss. There's another team that's much improved. Oh, you'll, you'll let me yes. know. has done a fantastic job there. Uh, they're ranked. They're in my poll. Yeah. I've had them in my poll since December. I think they're that good. <laughs> All right, you need to send a message to everyone else. They're not in the top 25 presently. As Stady knocks it down from deep. How about the Terps tomorrow night against Iowa and Caitlin Clark? Well, a healthy Diamond Miller changes things defensively yep. for... Brenda Fries and Angel Reese has been playing like an All-American all season. She's a double-double on the inside. Ashley Wusu has been bothered by some ankle injury and, and you know, but but Kaylee, Kate, or Kate, no, Katie Benzen is capable of running the point. They got a lot of weapons, too. They're a healthy team. When they're healthy, they're good. And when folks uh, check out on ESPN, coming up next, Louisville and Notre Dame. Yeah, well, Jeff Wall's team is connected on the defensive yes. end, right? They're going to make you work for everything offensively. Uh, Notre Dame likes to play in transition, and they're very good at skipping the ball in transition, but I don't think Jeff Walls' team is going to let him do much of that. Good young talent with Miles and Citron for the Fighting Irish and Neil Ivey trying to get that cranked up again. But what Jeff Walls does so well defensively is they don't let you reverse the ball, and if they can keep everything on the strong side, then they can really load up their defense. And they are really tough to score against when they do that. Final two minutes here in Athens. Zaya Cook got it. She joins Henderson and Boston in double digits now with 10 points, five assists. Much better second half effort by Georgia, Joni Taylor. You know, got some pieces of film that they can look at. And, I mean, you're measuring yourself up against the best this season yeah. when you're going against South Carolina. Well, you try and find any little thing, right? And we touched on it at the half. Right now, they are beating South Carolina on the scoreboard in the second half. Uh, but it's only a, a four-point separation, so something to watch here in the last minute and a half. Are those interested? Zoisha Smith. Oh, you know the South Carolina fans are watching oh, to yeah. the very end. Oh, I mean, yeah. they, I'm they not are. saying it's a bad beat or anything. I'm no, just no. saying, hey, it's <laughs> a little something. <laughs> well, wish we had the something. opportunity to have a be bad beat we on need any women's Steve game. and Scott Van Pelt to yes. get in on some women's, bad, women's hoops bad beats. One minute remaining. Final minute.
Boston with another board and a timeout to get the subs into the game as Aaliyah will finish the day. 18 points and 12 rebounds. Another terrific for, uh, showing for her. And uh, let's see the block department, two blocks and two steals as well. 50% from the floor, made all our free throws. Dawn Stanley got to utilize her bench, got some good quality reps. We're going to see Rivers here at the point. That's a big point guard. <laughs> like Teresa Edwards in the house, right? That was one of their original big point guards nice. in women's basketball. Five-time Olympian. Oh, nice pick. Good. Job on that one from Hilton. Good anticipation. That's the word I was looking for. And that'll do it. 72-54 the final score. What an impressive afternoon for top-ranked South Carolina. And a dominant showing. Stick around. We're going to see if we can get Aaliyah Boston on the microphone with us here post-game. And she gets the double-double. Aaliyah Boston, a dominant performance on the glass once again. Does a great job on a 50-50 ball, getting position inside. Uses her footwork to spin over that left shoulder. Off the bounce, Dawn Staley can put her in space, and she can make a play. And Destiny Henderson and Sonia Rivers doing a great job of helping from the perimeter. And we do have Aaliyah Boston on with us right now. Thanks so much for joining us, Aaliyah. Of course. Stady. You get her into foul trouble early, and then you guys just took off. Tell us about the game plan once she went out in that first quarter. Yeah, um, before the game, coach said try to get points in the paint, um, post players and guards, so we just tried to attack. And Stady's a really good post player, and so it just really worked out. Aaliyah, when your perimeter players are knocking down threes, especially early in the game, how much does that help you with the space that you need to operate? Oh, it helps a lot because they just open up the floor, and so it's going to be hard to just bring a double, and if they bring a double, you just kick it out because they've been knocking down shots. What was the tenor of the team coming off the Kentucky win where you only scored 59 points? Today, you guys look like you were ready to go. We just worked. We worked in practice the entire time, just working on uh, taking care of the ball a lot more and just rebounding and just continuing to be dominant. All right, thank you so much, Aliyah. We appreciate the time. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. All right, Aaliyah Boston and South Carolina. 11th win in a row in impressive fashion. For Debbie Antonelli, I'm Beth Mowens. Let's get you back to the studio.